Hello, my name is Josh Beck. I'm a technology teacher in San Antonio, Texas. I'm doing a unit on Java programming with uh, a group of eighth grade students. And uh, I figured a good way to sort of do Java would be uh, find a practical way to use it. And uh, an, excellent, um, an excellent way to use Java right now is the Android operating system. So this is a good getting started video if you're in my eighth grade class. You can also use this as review material. So uh, in order to get started with Android, You'll need to go to developer.android.com, okay? And there it is, developer.android.com. And I'm under the SDK tab, which stands for Software Development Kit, okay? And they have it for Macintosh, Windows, and Linux. Now, I'm running Linux right now, so I'm going to choose the Linux, um, Linux file. The same thing would apply for Windows. You just download the zip right there. Um, when you've downloaded the Android uh, Software Development Kit, it will appear, and of course I've gone and I've right-clicked on the file, and I've chosen Extract here. Once again, the same thing applies on Windows. And it will extract that to a folder, okay? And within that folder, uh, we've got several different subfolders. You've got Platforms, you've got Temp, Tools, and Add-ons. Platforms is uh, where it will uh, install the different versions of the Android operating system. There have been several released, 1.1, 1 1.5, 1 1.6, um, the most recent for the Nexus one that has just been re recently released is uh, what, like 2.1? Uh, so we'll go, uh, and that's where the different platforms will be installed. So we're going to go to Tools, though. And under Tools, you'll see a, a file called Android. Okay? Um, when I first started programming for Android, I, I don't believe that the, uh, the manager was this, this easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to double click Android and I'm going to choose Run, once again using Linux. And uh, under settings, because I'm at, at a school district computer, I'm going to have to set my HTTP proxy server. Okay, so it does have proxy support here. Um, if you're at home, you won't need to worry about that. And I'm going to go for available packages. And if you click the down arrow, it's going to go through and it's going to give you a list of all the different um, software development kits and APIs that are available. Okay. Um, you can see 1.5, 1.6, 1.1, 2.0. .1, uh, the one that I've downloaded is um, Android 2.0 API. No, I'm sorry. I've downloaded um, I've downloaded uh, 2.01 API 6. All right, and I've already downloaded it. So what you do is you select the package that you want, and then you just click Install Selected. Okay. Um, so once you've uh, clicked on it and you've chosen install uh, to install a platform, you'll go to virtual devices up at the top. And right now, let's say there are no AVDs, which stands for Android Virtual Device, available. All right, so we need to create a new Android Virtual Device. Um, I'm going to click New, and I'm just going to call it my first name, Josh. Okay, and uh, the target it will find anything that you may have installed under available packages. And in this case, you can see Android 2.01 API level 6 has been installed. Okay. And uh, for the SD card, if you want to go ahead and, and give it an SD card, you can give it a size and megabytes. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click Create Android Virtual Device. All right, and there it is. It says it has successfully created the Android virtual device. Now I can select that platform level, and uh, they make it real easy. You can just click Start right here. Now you can do all this through the command line. I'm going to click Launch, but uh, the graphical user interface, is, it's a nice experience. It makes everything very easy. Um, by you know launching these files through uh, the Bash shell, um, you just have to pass it parameters. Um, it's actually it's not that difficult because they're it basically tells you what to do, but uh, using this particular Windows system uh, it makes it real easy to install the platform and get the virtual phone started. So I've got my Android virtual phone booting up, and uh, if you get to this point uh, and you give it another minute or so, uh, it will boot up and you'll have a working phone that has a few uh, applications installed. You can do things like change the wallpaper. You can get in. You can use the dialer. And in the next tutorial, we'll talk about installing Eclipse with the Android plugin so that you can get uh, applications installed on the virtual device. All right. Um, the nice thing about Android is you don't need a phone. Uh, having the hardware is nice because of the integrated you know, GPS, 
um, and all the bells and whistles, the camera works on the real phone. Um, basically, with this virtual device, you're limited and uh, to, you know, using virtual hardware, right? But uh, it, it, is, it is great if you can't afford the phone or if you don't have one. You can do just as much programming here as you can if you actually have the phone. So uh, I hope this video helped for anybody who's starting with Android. Um, thank you, and look for my next video, which will be on installing uh, the Android plugin for Eclipse.